Welcome back to the latest edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob Ali Share podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Ali Share, the chief content producer and writer of jakestake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. It is episode 115. And here today is the host of one of my favorite podcasts, well, new favorite podcast, Hot Takes Deep Dives podcast. And actually, this host, her work has been seen on Us Weekly, Huffington Post, Vulture, and New York Post as well. So please help me welcome one of the podcasting rising stars, Jess Throschild. Thank you, Jacob. How are you? I'm so excited. What an intro. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jess. I'm so happy and thrilled. Guys, she is a rising star in the podcasting world, and I had to have her on here. Thank you. Ask me anything. Listen, this is a Reddit AMA. I'm ready to answer all your questions. What do you got? All, all <laughs> righty, let's get started. So when did you get interested in media, and how did that passion evolve into desire to pursue a career in the entertainment industry? Sure. So I've always um, been a huge fan of pop culture. Listen, I'm 38 years old. So I grew up, you know, really throughout the 80s and the 90s. And I, you know, I would really cite Madonna as like my entry point to pop culture. That was when I knew culture was for me. And it has, it has remained that way ever since. And so I've always been one of those people that, you know, if I'm into something, I'm obsessed with it. Or I'm just totally disinterested. So I was always a super fan of the things that I was really into. But as far as doing something professionally, my first professional gig was in 2009, I helped create and launch um, the largest independent lesbian website that is still around on the internet. It's called autostraddle.com. And I helped found that website. I was a writer, you know, this is, this is before podcasting. So I was a writer on that site and I would write, I would just cover gay pop culture. And I kind of found my niche in doing celebrity interviews. And it was through, through that. And just really just because I wanted to talk to certain people, for example, back in the day, this was like Kate McKinnon pre SNL you know, pre-fame, she was on uh, a logo sketch show called The Big Gay Sketch Show with Julie Goldman from The People's Couch on Bravo and with a bunch of other very talented sketch performers. And it'd be like, okay, I, but I was a huge fan of hers. Be like, I really want to meet Kate McKinnon and interview her. And it would start from small things like that. And it just grew and grew. And, you know, that was where I honed my skills figuring out how to work the PR machine, get interviews, talk to publicists, work with managers, and also just actually hone my skill of interviewing. So long way of saying it started out in the written form because I would, you know, they, we would do them over the phone, but I would then have to transcribe these interviews into something that would actually be palatable and like legible to somebody reading it. I wish I, I wish I had those recordings, but you know same with me because transcribing oh my god because before everybody it start i jakes before i started the podcast everybody i have my website jakes-jake.com it's celebrating its 10th year this year and for the first couple of years i had to transcribe everything it is laborious yeah that was my life for several years and it's funny, a lot of the people that I have now come, I mean, kind of just shows you like I'm into what I'm into, like the things that I've been into, the things that I'm into, I have been into for years. So for example, when I was at Autostraddle, guess who I interviewed? Margaret Cho, Judy Gold, Sandra Bernhard, all the people that are still relevant today, people who, you know, I've now gone on to interview a bunch of those people for the podcast. And it just shows that you like what you like, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's the, and once you get that privilege, because once you get that privilege, because I'm just, a, as a, I'm a music lover and having mm. the opportunity to stay on the line with two dozen reporters, talk with Kenny Rogers and Cindy Lauper and Dolly Parton twice. And then not to mention have a one-on-one -on -one earlier this year with Desmond Child. It is, yeah. it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. All righty, so we got to talk about the origin story of Hot Takes Deep Dives because I really 
like the podcast so far. I've been, I really am truly enjoying it. So how did that develop? Sure. So I originally um, was part of a different podcast, um, maybe like three or so years ago. Um, it was not like this, though. It was, it was Bravo centric, but it wasn't quite it wasn't quite my voice. It wasn't quite like this. And when that so that was really how I learned to hone my voice and actually like speak and become a better communicator. When that show ended, I immediately launched my own thing. I knew that I wanted to do my own thing um, where it could really be my my vision and have complete control. So this far, even like as far as the name, Hot Takes and Deep Dives, I remember I used to title some of those episodes on that old show. I would say like Hot Takes on like Real Housewives of New York City or like Deep Dive, you know, I'd, I'd you know, talk to my co-host and be like, listen, I want to do a deep dive on Pose on FX things like that. So the title even was just born out of like words that I was saying every day when we were recording. Awesome. So guys, I just want to let you know that Jess has done phenomenal interviews, extensive interviews. And one of my, one, the interview that got me turned on to your work was with Rosie O'Donnell. It was probably her most candid podcast interview. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, what? Yeah, I, I I've loved Rosie. I grew up watching Rosie. Um, huge influence on on me, and even the the work of even like securing that interview took months. I'd been working on getting that interview since before the election, and it. I see. I I'm happy. It seems like I did it justice. Like I I got across everything that I wanted her to get across. What I wanted to get across. So I'm super happy that it's been able to reach people like you, you know, so many people who would genuinely be interested in listening to it. She's fabulous. And I got to say, I remember one, probably one of the best, we're, we're probably from the same, we're, pro- we're from the same generation, but I got to say Rosie's show is still today. One of the best talk shows that has ever been on the air. Yes. What she is, she's probably the best daytime host that there ever was right? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, um, love la- I love late night, too. I mean, I love, listen, I love Letterman and Conan. Like, I love those guys who, like, aren't really around anymore. I mean, Conan's still around, but, you know, like, I'm a huge Howard Stern fan. Like, these are my, these are what my influences, where I sort of picked up little tricks and tips like interviewing style and like certain things you can do to draw a person out. I learned a lot from Howard Stern. Same. It's not just Howard for me. Um, Rose, in addition to Rosie and Howard and Letterman, it's also Regis, the late department part of Regis. Oh, wait, tell me what you learned from Regis. Uh, To have a conversation and tell a story. He was an incredible storyteller, especially during host chats. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he was great. Absolutely. So let's get on to the other interviews. Um, Walter Af- Af- oh God, Afan- so Afanasi- Afanaf- Afanasiev. Walter Afanasiev. Yeah. I knew I was going to do this during our conversation. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Walter. That was probably one of my as a mu- as a music lover. That was a really good interview. And also, I was so surprised to hear about how he felt with Mariah Carey, and that he went and how they briefly reconnected years la- years later. Yes, yeah. So I'm a huge I'm a huge music fan as well, and I love Mariah. And this was right. I interviewed him right after her book came out. And I knew that I was going to try and interview him. I, I mean, I would have, I was reading the book no matter what, but this was like Mariah fever pitch. And I've always been really into songwriters. Like whenever I would get an album, I would always look at the track listing. Who wrote, who were the writers? Who were the producers? How is, you know, how did the artist actually work? You know, how much of a hand did the artist actually have? in the body of work. And any Mariah fan knows that Walter Afanasiev is responsible for everything from her debut album up through Butterfly. And it was fantastic to talk to him. Well, not only through Butterfly, he also co-wrote All I Want for Christmas Is You with her. In addition to like 
a ton other like number one hits and all of that. And so he was so nice and chill and down to earth. He was in his recording studio. He's talking about how like, oh yeah, I'm recording with Barbara Streisand in the next room for her new album. Yeah. He was like actually one of the most relaxed guests that I've ever had. Like he's just, you know, he's not really in the public eye, not really in the spotlight. So like he was very disarming. Like there, it was just very relaxed. He was open to, ask, you know, it's a very sensitive topic, his falling out with Mariah. And like, there was nothing I could say that was going to throw him. Like he knew, he knew, you know, he was very open. I'm glad he was so open. It was probably one of my one of my be one of the best interviews for music for music. And if for any music podcast host, you should check out that interview to see how to stylize that, how to come across that that territory. Thank you. Here, wait. I'll give you. I'll give you something because I know at the time that that we're doing this, a, an interview that's coming out very very soon. I'm sure you know Cara Diaguardi. Oh yes, I've been wondering where she was. You're about to hear it all. I cannot yeah, wait. It'll, be, I cannot. it'll be out. It'll be out by the time this interview is out. It'll be out. You'll be able to listen to it very, very soon. And she sings in the interview. She sings Kelly Clarkson, Walk Away. You're like, I had her go through all the song, the big songs that she wrote. Sober by Pink, Ain't No Other Man, uh, Christina Aguilera. She walks me through working with Britney on the Blackout album. Wow. And this is like actually one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. It, she And she was so cool. I, I always loved her. So I'm excited she, for people to hear that too. She is so underrated. It's not even funny. I'm so happy that you mentioned this. I've been wondering mm -hmm. where Kara was. I cannot wait to listen to this interview. Yeah, all your questions will be will be answered. She's awesome. I love her. Like if I she's she's someone who like I would love to hang out with. Like she just very like cool chick, you know? Absolutely. Um I got to say Rachel Dratch. The thing is for me, I feel like of all that group, she came in the one of the most popular groups of all time. Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, Maya Rudolph, Sherry O'Terry, Rachel I feel like with Amy and Tina and Maya, they've done their household names. Rachel is so underrated. It's not even funny. She is a tour the force in the comedy world. She is phenomenal. You know, I, I met, so I have, I, I, I've told this story a couple, eh, maybe I've told it once, once, maybe twice on the podcast. I, so I guess another, before I was writing for Autostraddle, almost like the precursor to that was I have like a whole SNL journey that I, 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 I've told the story one time I was interviewing somebody and it was like very relevant to it. It was, I was interviewing a fellow uh, Bravo podcaster and we were talking about Saturday Night Live. And so when I was in college, when I was at NYU, I, this was right when, T, this was right when Tina got, got update. So this was like the year 2000 when they all came up and I, would you know? I met a ton of friends through the SNL community, basically by going, you know, go, doing the standby line and hanging out at Thirty Rock. Like we just had this insane access because we were at NYU, and even the people who weren't at NYU, they were just like hanging. There's a whole like, you know, <laughs> the, uh, very enthusiastic fan community, <laughs> as there yeah. are with as there are with Housewives, and by hanging out and like meeting these people, like you would see them like all the time. Like you can meet the cast of SNL. I'm sure you can still do it now. Um, maybe the, back then there was just like no security. So like I knew Jimmy Fallon, Tina, Rachel, Amy, like I knew these people and they knew me because we would always try to like have a, like the goal was like, how far can you take the conversation? Like how long can you take the conversation before they have to like run upstairs to go rehearse? And so that was how I initially met all those people. And then I knew that Rachel lived, she lives really close to me. Um, I mean, I guess that's irrelevant, but I would occasionally yeah. see, I guess I would see her around from time to time. And I eventually, I just eventually got to interview her. It was amazing. She came to my apartment. We did it. This was like during one of the like relief periods during COVID where like, you know, in the fall when people were more like chill, 
she came over and like we did it. And I knew, you know why I wanted Rachel? Because I knew she was a huge Housewives fan. And mm-hmm. a lot of my show, when I'm not doing these inter- you know, these these big sort of interviews, uh, it skews a bit toward like the Bravo Housewives fandom and the shows and stuff like that. So I interview people from that world as well, but I also love talking to these huge people about, like I'll just throw housewives in just to like see what kind of reaction I can get. And I knew that she performed in Countess Luann's cabaret show. So I already knew, knew that I, and I had seen her do it. So that was, that's literally how I kick off the Rachel Dratch episode is like, we need to talk about Countess Luann. So like, it's an icebreaker, mm-hmm. you know? Absolutely. And you mentioned Margaret Cho earlier, like you, this is was mm-hmm. your, for your podcast, it was your first time in a while interviewing her. So how, what was those two interviews like from the first time that at your first, the first one and now the podcast one? I don't even remember doing the first one, to be honest with you. That one I don't remember doing with her. I very much remember interviewing Sandra Bernhard for Auto Straddle. And I totally remember doing Judy Gold for Auto Straddle, which was like a decade ago. Like, so those interviews are a decade apart um, because I did those in person. The Margaret Cho, we must have done it over the phone. So there's like no memory, although you can find it online. If you like search my name in Margaret Cho and Auto Straddle, you can read the interview. Um, But the Sandra and Judy Gold interviews are both great. Like, it's just, it's such a snapshot of the time, you know, like in the Sandra, in the Sandra interview, I'm asking her what advice, okay, a question I, okay, this is such, so perfect to like Mm -hmm. snapshot, snapshot of the time. One of the things I ask her is what advice would you give to Lindsay and Samantha Romson? Oh, wow. Because they were together at that time. We're like, they had just broken up. I remember that, that. That. So that's like a perfect example. Like I remember asking her that and I remember asking her, oh, Lady Gaga and Adam Lambert had just broke. And I was asking her, what do you think of Gaga? And uh, yeah, so it's just so funny. Like all these, it's like, it would be, it's a a totally different interview in 2021, you know? Absolutely. And besides seeing Adam and Gaga go into the stratosphere. Yeah. I've seen both of them before. I'm very blessed seeing them both before. Yeah. Uh, Gaga was at the Monster Ball before she got injured in Kansas City before she got injured. And then I've seen Adam twice, once solo with with Pentaton- supporting with Pentatonics in 2015 in Kansas City. And in 2017 with Queen at, at Barclays Center. Oh my God. That mm-hmm. show was unbelievable. Yeah. And speaking of unbelievable, I got to say, Bruce Bozzi, someone who rarely gives interviews because I've heard of Bruce's names through people like Andy Cohen and Kelly Ripa. Yeah, so he is, he Bruce Bozzi is Andy Cohen's best friend. He's part of that whole crew with Kelly Ripa. That's that's how Carol Radswell, I don't know how big of a Housewives fan you are, but it's how Carol Radswell wound up on the Housewives. He, Bruce Bozzi was close with Carol Radswell and made the introduction to Andy Cohen, and then she wound up on New York Housewives. And Bruce Bozzi, he was the king of the Palm restaurant, like huge steakhouse chain across the U.S. And I had met him a few times here in the city and out in the Hamptons at the Palm. He he's hosted events, you know, book events for Andy when Andy was promoting his books in years past. And he has his own radio show on Andy's Sirius channel and I've literally never heard him interviewed aside from just so occasionally he would co-host with, with Andy on his radio show. And I got a million questions. So I, I reached out. It took a little bit of back and forth. Like, you know, at first I didn't hear back. And then like a few months later, I emailed. It's like sometimes that it's that second email. Sometimes emails just get lost. Like the biggest piece of advice I have for somebody that's trying to do this is persistence is your best asset. Like if I gave up after the first time I tried to get Rosie, I wouldn't be talking to you. Like, do you know how hard I had to work? The following up, the persistence, the, 
you know, quelling of any, you know, fears or ideas or what's it going to be, you know, you have to following up and persistence and patience is like the number one is that's the name of the game when it comes to getting what you want, not only in life, but, you know, in something like this, where it's out of your control, you're trying to sell yourself to a potentially very big star, whether it's okay, whether it's, it could be Bruce Bozzi on one day, or it could be Rosie O'Donnell the next day. You know, either way, I'm still trying to get an email response. And I'm you know? so proud of that persistence, your persistence. It's incredible. And I got a feeling it, you're by next year, if we sat down for another conversation, you would have more stories to tell. Thank you. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there's tons of people that I would love to speak to. Um, tons. We'll get that. We'll get to that question in yeah. near the end. But like, sure. however, we got to talk about because in addition to these interviews, I'm very happy that you have let me, you have other people have a chance to shy because guys, just to let you, everyone, just to let you know that sh that uh, Jess also welcomes a diverse group of people, such as Faces by Bravo, Sasha Morfa, and also astrologist Anthony, Anthony Bellotti for various episodes to discuss pop culture hot topics. So, how do each one of these guests help spice up hot takes and deep dives? That's a great question. So. Listen, initially, before I could get, you know, I don't just wake up and get a Rosie O'Donnell, you know, you got to start somewhere. So, of course, I'm, I'm going to initially, you know, it's built the biggest way to get your name out there in in the, the podcasting community is to collaborate. You have to collaborate with other podcasters. We're collaborating right now. And so. um Okay, well, I'll give you an example. Okay, the easy example is you mentioned Andy Bellotti, um, who's an astrologer. Well, fun fact, he's my best friend from college. I've known him for 20 years. Wow. So, yeah. So he's, you know, this is a guy who's like been my best friend and he, he's been practicing astrology for like over 15, 17 years and he turned it into a full-time business several years ago and my show was off the ground and I said, you got to come on the show and like do the birth charts of the housewives like how hilarious would that be and mm -hmm. now anytime like a new cycle you know whether it's potomac roni new jersey like we're about to record a jersey astrology episode and uh, he's obviously a huge housewives fan and so it's just a unique way of looking looking at these things you know there's tons of recap podcasts you know podcasting is really built on the shoulders of blogs and a lot of the successful television blogs were TV recaps. You know, somebody like Brian Moylan, who I actually have on my, I've had on my show and I'm going to have him again very soon. He's a good friend of mine. He's a hugely successful uh, housewives recapper. So, so successful that he co-wrote Erica Jane's book and he's coming out with his own book on the housewives. Actually, by the time this is out in May, it'll, it'll be out. And so What's the point? The point is, <laughs> the point is <laughs> that a lot of people recap, recap the shows. That's not, that's not my skill set. Like I can't do that. So I love talking to people who have really strong opinions and I love throwing questions at them, like rapid fire. That's where the hot takes comes from. Rapid fire questions. Like, I, okay, I recorded something last night. And I asked my guest, how, how into housewives are you? Um, I'm just, I know that I know of them because of it, Bravo and watching Wendy Williams. Oh, so that's I know, so funny. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know of, I know Lisa Rinna because she was on Dancing with the Stars and I got to say, Dancing with the Stars is turning out a lot of successful, have boosted a lot of careers. Look at Lisa, look at Mario Lopez. Yeah. Look at Zendaya. All so, those people that were on Dancing really, ex really got their careers excelled. So, okay. So to answer the question, to better, to more quickly answer the question, how did these different, they just provide a different flavor. Like I love, you know, like my, my friend Andy, who looks at it through the lens of astrology, um, Sasha, who's an actress. I love speaking to actors. She's an actress who, because of COVID, she wasn't able to audition. She started um, a, a, a YouTube, like an Instagram YouTube channel where she would basically break down Housewives episodes. And 
I loved what she was doing. She had great camera presence. Um, and so I asked her to come on and like, we re you know, we talked about like Potomac housewives. And then I even said to her, I'm like, you know what? I want to do something a little different with you. I was like, can we also review? This was about around the time that the new Miley Cyrus and Ariana Grande albums were coming out. I'm like, everyone is so used to listening to you talk about housewives. Why don't we do a little housewife? But then can we also review these two albums that were coming out on mm -hmm. Friday? So I like taking people and having them talk about something that people aren't already sick of hearing them talk about, you know? Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. Those are all great strategies. And yeah. I really, I really appreciate what you do. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So the media industry is probably one of the most competitive industries in the entertainment world. So what have been some of the challenges that you faced breaking into it and how did you overcome those obstacles? I suppose, I mean, the beauty of podcasting is it's entirely democratic. So there's no barrier to entry. So anybody, anybody can create a blog. Anybody can create, um, can write a medium article. It can be published in 10 seconds. Anybody can start a podcast. As soon as you figure out the technology element of it, you can do it. So there's nobody telling you yes or no. Really, the challenging thing is like I said, if you want to try and elevate it to a certain level, getting those bigger names, and then it's just everything I talked about before, which is collaboration, consistency, not giving up, persistence, and also a big piece of advice is don't become emotionally attached to numbers. A lot of podcasters are obsessed with the iTunes charts and, and all of that, and also reviews um, on Apple Podcasts. I would say that is the fastest way to want to throw yourself off a bridge. So I never look at that stuff. Um, you know, it, you can take things personally and like, why is this person doing better than this? Oh, this person wrote me a negative review. Like what they don't, don't look at it. So a lot of those hurdles are psychological and they're internal. So I feel like the more you, you can clear the pathway to just stay true to your own creative vision and not get distracted by outside forces, nobody can touch you. That is some, that's a great piece of advice. And I needed to definitely hear that. Uh, because I'm still new yeah. in this game. And so I definitely need to hear that. Thank you so much, Jess. Yeah, I, I really mean it. And it took it took me, I've been doing this a while, you know, just I've been doing this a while, you know, podcasting and, and I've been through a lot. I, I've been through some stuff in the podcasting world and it's really, stick. don't try to be anybody else. Like the people who love you, they... They want to hear you. They don't want to hear you try and copy the guy next to you. They don't want to hear you steal that person's guest. Like, think of the people who you genuinely want to speak to and seek those people out. Don't go trying to, like, steal guests because people see through that and it turns them off. It's not a way to, it's not a way to get ahead. And a lot of people don't realize that. I, I agree with you 100% on that. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. So have you, I know we talked, touched on this earlier, but like how are, can you name some or like five or seven dream guests that you have and why would it make an impact on the hot takes and deep dives? Oh my God. Okay. Yes. Here we go. All right. Some dream guests. Some of these, you may not know who they are. Cause some of them are a little bit housewives related, but oh, I'll try to keep the it housewives to a minimum. All right. Okay. Dream guest, Joy Behar. Oh yeah. Janine Garofalo, mm -hmm. Sandra Bernhard, who I'm very, cl I'm very close. I, 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 I know her slightly. I, I, I've met her a, a bunch and I have interviewed her before. It's just a matter of timing, but I want to get her on the pot. I want to sit down and COVID was an issue. So Sandra Bernhard, um, Debbie Mazar, she doesn't really do podcasts, so it may be very difficult. Um, I'd love to interview Michelle Visage. From Drag oh, Race. Yeah. She would be great, especially with since the rise of 
the well about RuPaul's Drag Race dominating like the entire world. Yes, and she's been almost on every single one of them. She has. Yeah. And I've had a bunch of drag race people on, on my show. And I love talking to those people as well. Um, I love talking to those, to those people. Um, so yeah, I'd love to talk to Michelle Visage. Who else? I mean, I would love to talk to, do you know who, um, like Jose Extravaganza? Do you know who that is? I have is? not heard of him, unfortunately. So he was one of Madonna's like backup dancers during the during Vogue and the Truth or Dare era. Like he was like one of the Truth or Dare dancers, and he now works on Pose. And I would love to talk to him and get a real inside look at what it was like to be on the Blonde Ambition tour, like under the reign of Madonna. Like I would love, I would love that. Um, I mean, those are. Those are some people. I mean, as far as housewives, the number one housewife I would love to talk to interview would be probably Carol Radswell. Um, she's a huge story behind her. I mean, look it up. I can't. Exp I can't justify <laughs> Carol Radswell to you, but um, yeah. Awesome. So we gotta start winding down our conversation. Sure. So what are your thoughts about? Uh, what are your favorite social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram and Twitter? and maybe even TikTok or YouTube. So what are your thoughts about them and what are your favorites? I love um, I love Instagram, I love Twitter. I, I'm not super active on Twitter. Like I look at it all the time, but I really just use it to promote my stuff. Instagram I use, I, I, I post stories, I have a lot of fun with it. YouTube, I, I'm addicted to YouTube, just like watching tons of interviews and watching like literally anything, but I don't have any, I, I have a YouTube channel where I put videos of my interviews and some audio of my interviews, but um, yeah, those are my favorites. TikTok, I don't mess with and Facebook, I don't really mess with. I don't mess with TikTok either because the thing is, <laughs> I'd rather have a conversation with you or work on a project yeah. that could that then do a TikTok video because I don't have time Wait, is know, precious as we get you know, older. You know what's funny? So Rosie of all people is like she's like very active on TikTok. And at the end of every TikTok, she ends it by saying, TikTok, you don't stop. Every <laughs> single TikTok. So sometimes I go on there to only exclusively look at what she's doing on there because I just like it's I think it's so random that she's on there. It's so funny. Yeah, and I definitely think if she ever decides, especially after that 2020 um, virtual virtual celebration for Broadway, for Broadway, if she ever does the show again, and if TikTok's still around, I could definitely see her incorporate that. Yes, for sure. All righty. Why should my audience check out Hot Takes and Deep Dives? Wow. I mean, listen, if you have an interest in gay pop culture from a certain era from you know the 90 the 80s 90s and the early 2000s if you came up in the 90s or the early 2000s this is the show for you you're going to listen to uh, you know last week i had um one of the cast members from the real world san francisco we talked about the like you know pedro zamora's legacy um in terms of in terms of aids awareness i've had a bunch of real worlders on the show. I'm a huge real world fan. Danny Roberts from real world New Orleans was on, um, tons of people from the real world. Um, what else? I mean, um, some upcoming guests. I have Cara Diagordi, as we mentioned, I interviewed John Cameron Mitchell who created Hedwig and the Angry Inch. He's going to be on, um, I did an interview with Carson Kressley a while back. You can dig wow. that out. We talk about New York City nightlife, especially if you if you have an affinity for New York City. It's very rooted in that as well. Because I'm I'm a Long Islander. I've lived in New York my entire life, so that's my true sense. There are two things I know about: gay shit and New York City. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Here we are. <laughs> awesome. So. Where can my audience find you, find the podcast, and also how can they support you on social media? You can find, so the podcast is called Hot Takes and Deep Dives. You can find it anywhere you listen to podcasts. Just search Hot Takes and Deep Dives. Um, my Instagram username is JessXNYC, and that's also my Twitter username if you feel like going there. Um, that's it. 
Awesome, guys. So if you miss an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob L.A. Share podcast, head to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Spreaker. Just type in Jake's Take with Jacob L.A. Share, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Once again, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R podcast. And also, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media, too. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And while if you're watching this on YouTube right now, please subscribe and please like this interview. I would really appreciate it. Jess would really appreciate it. And Jess, I mentioned before, I've been doing this for over 10 years, so a decade. So jakespeak.com, thank you for all my articles, including those interviews with Kenny Rogers and Dolly and Cindy and Desmond Child. You can all go there. And also, guys, please consider heading to PayPal to help keep jakestake.com and my platform up and running. I, all the help is really great. Jess, you are a rising force in our podcast and field, and I cannot wait to see what you do next. Oh my God. You're so sweet. Thank you. I love you. You're a sweetheart. Thank I'm, excited. You so I'm excited to see what you do next. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one. Bye.